All right, the museum is up next. Huh. How are you? Ne? <laughs> I am uh, I'm proud to be the first US president to visit Kenya. Um, and obviously this is personal for me. There's a reason why my name is Barack Hussein Obama. <laughs> uh, my father came from these parts. I have family and relatives here. And in my visits over the years, walking the streets of Nairobi, I've come to know the warmth and the spirit of the Kenyan people. Now, uh, what President Kenyatta and I really want to have is a a conversation with our panel. And we've got some outstanding uh, young people here today who I think represent the promise of entre entrepreneurship not only in Africa but around the world. But I do want to make just a few quick points. Uh, we are joined today by inspiring entrepreneurs from more than 120 countries and many from across Africa. And all of you embody a spirit that we need to take on some of the biggest challenges that we face in the world. The spirit of entrepreneurship, the idea that uh, there are no limits to the human imagination, that ingenuity can overcome uh, what is and create uh, what needs to be. Barack Obama there, of course, when he came to Kenya from uh, the archives, just to give you a rich of your memory. But of course, even as we continue to look at the UN, uh, the US election, the protest vote is what is on the front page of the week. Will the chaos on campus hurt Biden in November? And this is what we've been discussing also with our panelists uh, regarding the eruption of uh, some of the protests from the universities there, and is it clear that he's not been hard on the ground in terms of snuffing out this protest? Many columnists and many also newscasters uh, and uh, editorials and columnists have been talking about this largely, as you can see on the front page of the week. Protest, protest votes, will the chaos on campus hurt Biden in November? Let's begin with you, Dr. Hassan Kanenja. <coughs> Uh, the campus protest will not hurt Biden in November. Will sink Biden in November. <laughs> it will sink. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> unless something, or unless Trump, Trump, despite the legal challenges he's facing, unless he does a lot of damage to himself, there is likelihood that uh, Joe Biden will be going home, and not just him. That uh, Democrats are going to be swept. It's going to be. Uh, probably may be worse uh, than what happened in 2010 uh, for Democrats, and part of it has to do with Gaza. I don't like exactly this depiction because it's not the exact depiction of actually what is happening. There's almost a demonstration of some kind of moral equivalence with regard to the numbers who are protesting, yeah. because those who are saying never again, uh, it is pretty much like 1% as opposed to those who are saying, you know, free Palestine. And the free Palestine movement is actually going to sink uh, Joe Biden. Again, as I'm saying, unless Trump does a one or two things to himself to lose this election, he, you know, it is his, you know, to lose at the moment. Now, this is also going to have consequences, and you know, serious consequences, uh, not just with regard to, uh, right now, of course, the U.S. standing in the world morally has really suffered extensively as it is for the collective West, especially over Gaza. 
But then at the same time, the Trump second presidency or potential second presidency is also going to have more implications with the world. Because number one, he's not a better version over on, on Gaza than and Joe Biden is. I think the protest vote he, he vote here is not because Americans are hoping that Trump is going to be better. Is that uh, the liberals, especially and the young people, they're dissatisfied mm. that the party they trust to stand for human rights, uh, for justice, and for freedom in the world is certainly the one that is betraying their cause. But now, that prospect of Trump president is going to have implications with the way the America also <coughs> relates to the rest of the world, <coughs> as it was in the first Trump presidency. But it may also have an impact on the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, uh, considering uh, Trump's own reservations with regard to uh, continued aiding, for instance, of Ukraine against, you know, uh, Moscow. And so there's likely to be, you know, titanic or uh, tectonic shifts yeah. uh, within the geopolitical landscape, not only in the way uh, Washington is viewed, but the general <coughs> uh, political architecture of the world as we know it. And of course, Kenya needs to position itself in a way that is not going to be a loser in the uh, inevitable changes that may be coming after November 5th in the United States, as well as potentially elsewhere in Europe, considering the rise of uh, right-wing and the growth of right-wing parties that are now taking shape across continental Europe. Uh, does um, Donald Trump really hold sway uh, against also Biden as it stands, especially with the stormy steamy affair that uh, was there before and, uh, and right now we can see it's getting a political tone to try and stifle Trump's efforts to becoming uh, again the president of the United Donald States. Donald Trump's steamy affairs is not taking any political steam out of his train unfortunately. Uh, he's still actually beating Joe Biden in terms of matchups almost consistently for the last 12 months and that has not changed. And the swing states that they say is the swing is king they still right where they've been in a while. And if, uh, if Democrats lose Michigan, lose Wisconsin, they are going home. They lose Ohio, they're going home in the morning. You know? And right now, it's pointing to the fact that they're probably going to be swept in those states. And it's going to be unfortunate because we may be in for a very, very, not just four years, you know, probably potentially 10 years of policies that are going to, for good or bad, you know, affect us in one way or another. Yeah. That is why Kenya has to be studious, has to be careful, and the continent also has to watch out. That is why I've always pushed for more self-sufficiency and independence, so that whatever the dynamics are or take place in Washington, Brussels, or London, at least uh, the country and the continent, the region has protected itself or ensured itself sufficiently that they can still be able to forge ahead. Mm -hmm. All right, Professor yeah. Mashara. Well, <clears throat> Donald Trump thrives in um, crises. In fact, he likes them. And the Stormy Daniels story is good for him because there's a lot of publicity <laughs> for which he's not paid. Mm -hmm. And that's how he won in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, that. So he stands a very good chance of coming back, being elected, whether he's convicted of something or not. He'll still, he's still, because the, the criteria for being president in the US uh, has two angles only. You are 35 years old, and you are born in the United States. That, those are the only qualifications, yeah. and he meets them. All those others are sideshows, I mean, the whole thing. But he represents a movement, some, a, a strong feeling in the country that something has gone wrong, and he looks as if he's a, a savior, he can fix the whole thing. So he's likely to win. And I think I agree with the energy there that uh, Kenya's policy should be Mm -hmm. you just uh, don't become too much as if you are somebody's organ, yeah. uh, especially if the, the one you are supposed to be the organ for is losing, because <laughs> it appears as if Biden is losing in, in that regard. Uh, the, um, he is losing in part because of Gaza, yeah. but also Ukraine. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> both of them, uh, Ukraine is an unnecessary embarrassment. Uh, from what it was thought when, when it started. Mm -hmm. uh, Gaza is even worse because Gaza is more moral mm -hmm. uh, than uh, anything. And uh, Ukraine is just an embarrassment, geopolitical embarrassment, failure, uh, as to what may have been uh, uh, thought. Those who had been warning that something was wrong uh, with the Ukraine venture 
were ignored, now they are being proven right. Hey. <laughs> After two years, uh, Russia has not collapsed. It's you know, growing. <laughs> you know, yeah. that, I mean, that was a dream. Oh, they are going to be finished. We are going to put sanctions. And yes, the sanctions um, have hurt. Uh, because you cannot use your credit card in, uh, yeah. <laughs> in Moscow. But uh, they, they seem to be doing well, the whole thing. So all those things are hitting back at Biden. And so even when the Congress is refusing to appropriate money for Ukraine, mm -hmm. Is a ramification of these um, uh, bad policies that are backfiring on the, on the whole thing. So the likelihood of Biden losing and the Democrats as a team is very high. Mm. Isn't it interesting that even with the Stormy Daniels uh, story, hacking back to 2006 was not really playing large during the 2016 election, where Donald Trump was coming through. I mean, it's erupting now. It's People will see no, there's such it, an ulterior no, motive that it, it, it did. It did. It did it. It did. It, it, it did. It did. Yeah, and he, he enjoyed it because he was getting publicity. In, in 26. Uh, yes. I, I can't did. remember if I, I, I read it. Uh, it did. Okay, I can't did. remember. And, uh -huh. um, you know, he had a habit since the medium. But it Would never really got publicity. traction as it is right now. You know, it, it, it it's never because right now, to the length of this where is the it only way Democrats are hoping to get rid of Donald Trump from the race. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And it's not, it's not exactly it's happening. Not working. Even if it goes to the Supreme Court, we know that six out of nine judges are conservatives. So it is kind of the last kicks of a dying horse. Mm -hmm. They need to go back home and re-strategize because this Tommy Daniel things, that steam is not affecting the political steam of Donald Trump, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And she was the willing player. So, yeah, it was consensual. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. The, the, issue, the, issue is, the issue is not the fact that it was consensual. I mean, that, that one is mm -hmm. a private matter between themselves. But then uh, the issue... But she's... she's, she's no, no, the issue uh, She's is admitted that, herself it was no, consensual. No, no, it, the, 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 issue is, the issue is that he used the campaign... Yes. ...funding. funding. Campaign donations funding to pay her off. Mm. You see what I mean? Okay. You're, you're supposed to account for everything. That's the official argument. <laughs> that's, yes. that's the one they're trying to make. But that's, that's not the real issue. That's not the real issue. No, but that's what they're trying to say. That is the <laughs> excuse. Let me just come to that. Uh, Donald is going to win. Donald is going to win. <laughs> and uh, he will win. And, and I, I like it the way... Uh, uh, the way um, uh, uh, Hassan and, and, and the professor have both put it. The Democrats have cheated the world for the longest. The liberals were supposed to be... I mean, African-Americans, uh, a substantial portion of the African-American votes are going to vote for Donald this time. Mm -hmm. Because they say we better deal with, a, with, a, with an avowed, open racist than deal with crooks who basically are, you know, all, all of them run by the Zionists, you know what I mean, eh? One way or the other. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I think uh, that's, that's true, because when somebody is racist and he tells you, I don't want to integrate with you, yeah. you can come to an understanding. In any case, in my culture, I, I don't want to integrate with him also. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd be too happy with that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we, 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 why would you want mm -hmm. them to marry into you and you marry into them, you know what I mean? We might as well maintain our own, our own <laughs> purity, unless you are, mm -hmm. you are, you are you're not happy with the way you look. Everybody should be very happy with the way we, we look, whether we are African Americans or whites. I mean, nobody is any superior race. So, so basically, what I'm saying is that I, I have no problem with that kind of things. The only problem I have is that we must get the, uh, everybody has got to get their fair share. There has to be, you know, we got more out of George Bush yes. than we got out of Clinton and Obama put together. Mm -hmm. Obama, who came from here, these this Democrats are thugs. They are, they are, they are frauds, deceit. So, and, and now, uh, 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 you, you had it that he has, he has sent bombs more than, more than was expended for five years in the entire Second World War, mm -hmm. only to Gaza. Mm -hmm. to, and, and look at that. And then that person tells you human rights. They talk to you about democracy. They talk to you about humanity. They don't believe in any of those ones. So I think, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, the, 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 the Republicans for the longest, mm -hmm. for the longest, have been fighting this so-called private societies, Masonic Lodge, uh, the, uh, the ADL, you know the ADL, eh? Mm -hmm. 
anti-defamation league, the deep, yes. the Zionist conspiracies, which are there, by the way, and they're there always, they literally control the world. And when Kennedy tried to get rid of them, he died, he skipped. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, even the white, conservative, racist Christians are sick and tired of these things that are happening to them in their country, particularly at the hands of this Zionist conspiracy. They see that, you know, the whole world works for them. And, and, and by the way, I talk, to, uh, talk about corruption to us. Look at the kind of corruption, look at the amount of pride, what do you call, mm. the lobby groups, the so-called lobbies is another way of corruption. How much money they give to these people to have their, their to, to win their support, for them to support a state like Israel. It's, so it's not going to be just him. It's going to be a whole, you know, the lot of what do you call uh, politicians who who are, who are going to go. And and you know one thing, you know what's the percentage of Jews in the American uh, population? Two percent. What's the population of Jews in the Senate? Huge. Over thirty percent. Population of Jews representatives in the the House of Representatives. 30%. 2% holds an entire nation hostage. Well, they're and, well organized. And, and very well organized, of course, and using their resources very well and control everything through this, you know, uh, secret, what you call, uh, organizations. So the only place that is free today <laughs> is Gaza. <laughs> You know what I mean? It, it might have been turned into another Dresden, but the people there know what they want. You know what I mean? Yeah, we had uh, Senator Lindsey Graham saying, of yes. course, uh, was very pivotal. What happened to Nagasaki, Hiroshima? Yes. And uh, the same should be meted out to, to Gaza, that Israel now should drop the bombs in, in Gaza. There and, you uh, go. Uh, people are there really taking flak off from that. There you go. Who are being and, from South Carolina, that should be expected. Uh, yeah. No, 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 not being from South Carolina, being a Zionist, that's, that's exactly how it is. And, and by the way, it's, it's precisely because of what is the condition of the world today mm -hmm. that Hitler felt he had to come up with a solution because that's how frustrated the Germans were. The war was sabotaged, everything was done, and, and they blamed it all on, on the Jews. Thank you. So, so this outrage you see globally right now was there in the German society, that's why Hitler Basically, was, was, they were willing to support him for everything, including the outrageous Holocaust, which, Thank I, you. which none of us support, and we still. But the, but the current Zionists don't know where they are taking their people. They're literally destroying the people for the future because nobody is happy with them in the world right now. The whole world feels like we are a colony, or the entire world is a colony of Zionism. It is. Right. More than 300 books collected by the first president of independent Senegal, Leopold Sedar Senghor will be transferred to Dakar after the Senegalese government stepped in to stop them being auctioned off in France. In total, 344 volumes will leave the house in Normandy, where Senghor spent the final 20 years of his life, several of them personally inscribed by authors, including Martinique Khan, a poet, Aimé C. Saizre, along with Cesare and other African and Caribbean intellectuals. Senghor was one of the founders of the Negritude Black Consciousness Movement, born in 1930s Paris. On the instruction of Senghor's heirs, his library was to go under the hammer at, the, at an auction house in the city of Saïen. In mid-April, divided into nearly 200 separate lots, but the newly elected president of Senegal, Basiru Dumai Fai, asked for the sale to be suspended while his government negotiated to buy mm -hmm. the complete collection. That deal was finalized earlier this month. Now, Rwanda is planning to establish Rwanda's first national defense university, according to Minister Defense Juvenal. Maris Munda. The country already has two higher learning institutions for defense studies, Rwanda Military Academy in Gako and Rwanda Senior Command and Staff College in Nyakinama, which offer training for junior and senior officers up to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel and 
canal in some cases. The courses offered at these two colleges are complete, complemented by University of Rwanda. The National Defense University will be independent from the University of Rwanda. Degrees will be offered by the Defense University instead of UR, as is current the practice. All right. We want to get a closing remarks right now from our panelists here. Let's begin with you, Dr. Hassan Kanenje. But it seems you want to contribute on that, but we're still, we're pinched for time, as I can see right here. We're actually all way off the time, right? Let's get to your closing remarks. I think uh, the impact of this flooding should serve as a lesson for us at Kenya. And even as the president declares a national holiday uh, this past week for planting trees, I think we should have also very strict policy when it comes to actually cutting down trees or farming the forest and stuff like that. Because this has had a direct uh, uh, linkage to the kind of damage that actually been caused because there's very little vegetation cover. And we've not had clear policies, especially when it comes to logging, ever since we, we, we removed the moratorium. We need to move with speed, but, but also fundamentally, we need to plan for disasters. And I don't think in City Hall, appointing theologians to be in charge of disaster management is going to be the best way. So yes, Kenyans, competency matters. Mediocrity, you lose. You're going to suffer as a people. Let's make decisions, let's make appointments Thank you. that are actually going to be credible right. going forward. But appointment of uh, theologians was uh, politicized. Yeah, <laughs> it was taking a political tone. <laughs> Maybe that's another de debate for another time. Let's hear from uh, you the closing remarks. The the theologians are closer to God in theory. <laughs> In reality, they are somewhere else. <laughs> no, I think there is a need to study the phenomenon we are. 60 years ago, 1961, we had another massive flood. Maybe not the same magnitude, but something close. It's possible that 60 years before, <coughs> in, uh, <coughs> in what, in uh, 1900, there could have been so the, I think there is something, that, because it's worldwide, mm. not just like that. And then I commend Rwanda for uh, copying Kenya. In, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of defense university. Maybe, yeah, they should because, get one of the lecturers here. No, they, 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 uh, this, Dr. Uh, Asan these, these, no, these people have studied at Nairobi, yes. the, the, the National Defense College. Uh -huh. And they are the top guys there. So they, they, it's, it's not a surprise that uh, they, they follow me. <laughs> It's commendable for It's them. commendable. Yeah. Thank you very much. Farah Malimi, your closing remarks briefly. Yeah, yeah. My, my closing remarks is that uh, when this government came to power... Uh, in is, that, is that a history or uh, is that no, a... No, no, I'm, just, of, I'm of, just trying to say okay. something. That I be, I'm trying to build something. Uh, I, and, 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 you know, William Ruto won the elections as the president of this country. One of the very landmark promises that he made and that we supported by all Kenyans was that there's not going to be any more enforced disappearances. Mm -hmm. That Kenyans or bodies of Kenyans would not be collected from rivers or from anywhere else and nobody will miss. Uh, without compromising on our vigilance, on our security. Uh, lately, in the last uh, uh, two months, <clears throat> we've had Kenyans who have been taken, abducted by the security forces, by people who are not known. Too many agencies that are operating in that, some from the military, intelligence, ATPU and the rest that nobody knows. And, and they surface after a long while. It's fair. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't want to say that they are innocent. They definitely would be, could be issues. But it's only fair that the families are told they're not kept in anxiety. And the families are, when somebody is arrested, the constitution is followed. Thank you. Uh, a period is given. Investigations are carried out very exhaustively. And, and, and brought to court if they have to. Thank but you. then for the families to sit back there and wait with a lot of anxiety for a month or two months, this mine is a serious you know, plea to the president. Mr. President, I don't know if people are following the orders very well. We have a few cases of that nature right now. Not too many the way they were in the previous government and we commend the president for that. But even this ones, we want to see uh, the, the, the rule of law, the constitution followed. 
and, and the families to know that their loved ones are under certain investigations. Thank and you. If there's going to be credible evidence. Thank you. Let them be brought to court. We, Thank you. We, we will always support the cause of justice. Thank you. And the security of our country. But yes. the people should Thank not you. just disappear like that. For a moment. Thank you. Uh, Member of Parliament, uh, Dadab, also International Affairs Analyst. We thank you for uh, coming through this morning. Dr. Hassan Kanenji, Director of Ahon Institute. Thank you. Professor Mashara Munene, historian. Thank you for coming through as well. And essentially, I also want to thank Irungu.